Eyes on her face Life of agony She falls from grace There's no light She tries to find A way out of the dark Guided by her Hey, surprise, everybody. It's going to be a Thursday night quickie. A little Thursday night quickie. As we announced this week, we're moving to Friday nights at 7 right here on Facebook. But we're, at, we're adding a twist. That thing right there. We will be live on Talk Radio 102.3 here in Chattanooga as well. So we'll be... We'll be live on Talk Radio 102.3 here in Chattanooga, and we'll be simulcasting to the Owl's Nest Barbecue Facebook page. So that's going to be a really cool thing. We want to invite everybody to tell their friends, and everybody in Chattanooga now can uh, just listen to us on the radio if you want to on Talk Radio 102.3, and everybody on my friends on the Facebook page on that side can still watch. And you can also... If you want to listen, go to WGOW.com and hit the Listen Live button, and you can listen as well at WGOW.com. And the best thing about this new venture with Talk Radio, we can take calls live on the air. Area code 423-267-1023, and we can take live calls. So that way you can, if you guys are out uh, uh, watching anywhere from from anywhere, listening anywhere on your on your phone or your device, you can uh, simply give us a call at four two three two six seven one zero two three, and um, and you can ask me questions. You can ask our guests questions. Like tomorrow night, we're kicking off the new format with uh, David Bosca from Butcher Barbecue out in Chandler, Oklahoma. David will be on for the full hour, and if you have any questions about barbecue rubs. Uh, seasonings, sauce, phosphates, injections, anything like that, David is the man to ask. And you can ask him live right here on the radio. So we're looking forward to that. And let's see here. Hold on one second. Just seeing if anybody wanted to ask any questions. I tell you what, let's have some fun tonight since this is the last, since this is the uh, last Thursday night show. Let's have a little fun here. Let's go to let's see. Let's just do it. Let's do a uh, ghost call. We'll just call this person right here, and we'll just see if he picks up. I was hoping I was calling this phone. I don't want to call this Skype. Hmm. <coughs> Steve is not available. But we always just call him on the telephone. We can have we can we can we can still we can still do more stuff because I've got a plethora. I've got a plethora of people we can call. We'll try this guy. We'll try this guy. Let's try this guy right here. Please leave your message for John McGuire. 
<laughs> Johnny's not picking up either. Where are all these guys at? What are they doing on a Thursday night? They're supposed to be watching my show. I wonder where those guys are. Anyway, we are going to be live tomorrow night on Friday at 7 o'clock right here on the Owl's Nest Barbecue Facebook page. And we will also be live on Talk Radio 102.3. And that starts at 7 o'clock as well, right after, for all the people in Chattanooga, of course, you know that's right after Sport Talk, right before the uh, Red Zone show on Talk Radio 102.3. And we will um, be live on both. And we're really looking forward to that. And don't forget, the best part about it is you can call in now at uh, 423-267-1023. And, of course, I'll have the number on the uh, uh, on the uh, board tomorrow night when we start. Don't forget also, this Saturday is the um, um, Smoke and Barbecue Day at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply and Pro Shop in Utah. We're going to start at 11 o'clock. We've got um, a Smoke Me Silly Barbecue Team will be up here. We've got Smoke and Sweet Meats Barbecue Team will be here. We've got Choo Choo Barbecue Team. They will be there. All three will be doing pork butt brisket and steak uh, presentations and kind of demonstrations as well. And also we've got the comedy of Big Ed Kaler going to be on at 1 o'clock. And if you have never heard Eddie Kaler here in Chattanooga, he is hilarious and you will love him. And that show starts at 1 o'clock. And um, all you got to do, all you got to do. Hello? Steve <laughs> well, what's up, Steve Dotson? How are you doing, sir? Oh, not bad. Just <laughs> trying to find batteries for kiddos and flashlights. <laughs> I just, I'm doing a surprise ghost call for you. Uh, okay, we're live. We're live on the, on the Facebook page, and uh, I wanted to get your um, um, comments uh, about your big double win last weekend in Withville, Virginia, in the backyard division of the KCBS um, tournament <laughs> that they had there. That um, Now, this guy, folks, let me tell you something. The, the Steve Dotson up in West Virginia. He's a backyard smoker guy. And, uh, of course, he's in the uh, backyard division of the KCBS. And he walks, he he drives into Whitfield, Virginia, with all these huge names uh, on both sides, pro sides and backyard side. And he he not only wins the first night, he wins the second night. He sweeps the double uh, in Withville, Virginia. T- Steve, tell everybody about that because that is an incredible feat. Well, let me just go ahead and say right off the bat that this has got to be jinxing me for this coming, not this weekend, but the following weekend. But I'm going to do it because <laughs> I was in a barbecue show. Um, you know, really the funny thing is, so we pulled in there, and it was it was – just like you say, it was big names on both sides. It was, of course, the last two contests of the the KCBS calendar season. Mm-hmm. So it was everybody's last chance to get points and final positioning in that, that team of the year race. Um, so on, on the pro side, you had names like uh, Slaps was there, Getting Basted was there, uh, Heavy Smoke was there, of course, one, two, and three. I think all the way up through uh, five in Tudors uh, and Tudors and... Uh, I can't recall the other. Anyways, in the backyard, you had pretty much most of the top ten in both categories for the backyard mm-hmm. race. Uh, um, and these are a lot of those guys are from Alabama, and I just met them la- the weekend before, where I just got shellacked at uh, Indiana. So, you know, I'm coming off of a terrible weekend, mm-hmm. coming into there, and uh, I mean, we woke up Friday morning, and there was 25 mile an hour wind gusts. Uh, so it was it was not exactly the best the best situation we were walking into to cook in. But you know the one thing that that we focus on all the time we cook is consistency. So you know there's a lot of times where I'm not the best cook in the field, but I can tell you my numbers are pretty much going to be within a couple of points of what they always are. Right. So you know we we cooked our cook on Friday there, and honestly, I didn't really even like it that much. It wasn't great, it wasn't bad, but. Uh, yeah, folks were asking me how it went, and I told them, I said, look, chicken was bad, ribs weren't great, didn't get enough rest in them, uh, I'm not expecting a lot today, and, and uh, lo and behold, I don't know how it happened exactly, but we ended up coming in third in chicken, second in ribs, first in pork, and 
and granted it with uh, a backyard score of 515 for three meat. Uh, so at that point, nobody believed me on Saturday when they came. Actually, I don't think anybody even asked me how my cook went on Saturday just because I told them I was bad on Friday and we ended up grabbing. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just one of those things, you know, even when uh, even when things aren't going your way, you just keep going through the motions, do what you, you know you need to do and, and see how it turns out. So Saturday rolls around. We corrected a few things. We added a little bit of time to ribs because of the, the altitude in the weather. We, uh, I changed the way I did my brine and injection for chicken because mm-hmm. uh, it came out a little bit. It, was, it just wasn't quite right. I wasn't happy with it. And honestly, we had a little bit of cook on Saturday, and the scores reflected it. Yeah. We ended up gaining about three points on the overall. And uh, Saturday, we walked with uh, a seventh-place chicken. And I was a little bit nervous because – Saturday, I felt like our best category probably was chicken. And we walked in seventh, and, and I, I just do a thing whenever we walk. I'll, I'll get back to my brother, and you know, I'll either give him a – I either won't give him a look if I think we're doing all right, but if I think we're in trouble, I'll let him know. And I got back to that seventh-place chicken call, and I was just like, well, I'm pretty sure that was our best category, so I don't know what we're going to hear the rest of the day. Um, I was wrong, apparently, because we ended up walking again with a first-place rib and a first-place pork, and – and pulled the grand again, so you know I've, I've only ever competed in two backyard doubles, and we were lucky enough to sweep that one. So mm-hmm. it's a uh, it's a different it's a different thing. I still almost don't believe it, it happened with uh, with the folks that were there. It's a lot of work, it, isn't it? Well, you know the funny thing is, in both doubles that we've done, uh, I feel like we got better the second day in both times. Yeah, the, the I could see that all prep. But but, uh, uh, but it, I mean it's 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 hard preparing for a double. I mean double you have to take double everything. Oh, absolutely. So what I did this time was um, normally when we cook pork for backyard, I'm I'm not you know we're we're not the pros chasing points. So I'll cook two butts normally, mm-hmm. uh, two money muscles, and then two shots at bacon. And and this time you know I was really focusing on the KCBS Team of the Year races, which were just chicken and ribs. So I was like you know. Pork matters to me because it matters for grand, and it's always nice to win a little gas money. But I'm not going to go crazy on it. So I picked out two butts from the store, and they were okay. Uh, they weren't great, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go old school on this. I'm not going to debone these. I'm going to cook pretty much the whole butt. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, what we can get out of it, we can get out of it. And we actually ended up uh, winning pork both days. So sort of, uh, sort of funny there that, you know, we just – I, I reduced the amount of meat in that category and just focused on what I had and actually scored better than I had all year on it. But yeah, we, uh, so I, I cook 16 pieces of chicken for every comp. So 32 pieces of chicken trimming is no joke. And, uh, the confession <laughs> I on doubles is I'll trim ribs on site the morning of. So yeah, I took eight racks of ribs with me, trimmed four Friday morning, four Saturday morning. See that cooler was so heavy. Yeah, I bet. I, you know, normally I'll, I'll muscle it around and then get it close to the trailer and my brother will help me get it up on there because we don't want to go banging into stuff. But, uh, yeah, I went to pick it up after I loaded it up and I was just like, Johnny, uh, you're going to have to come get this thing with me. Cause I can't pick this up and walk. No, it's, it's full of ice, water, uh, meat. I mean, you got everything in it. What, um, um, ah, gosh, I forgot what I was going to ask in a backyard. They cook, um, you said only ribs and chicken count on the team of the year race, right? Right. So KCB, so you'll get How some does that back- work. That's, that's kind of weird. Yeah. So KCBS, KCBS hasn't been sanctioning backyards for that long, really. I think mm-hmm. like five years or so. Uh, a guy named Randy Bigler's on the on the board had a big role in it. Like KCBS has always had backyard, but as far as sanctioning them, it's it's fairly recent, really. And then backyard organizers have the option to either they can add pork they can add it just as an ancillary if they want or they can add it as a sanctioned meat that counts toward grant mm-hmm. and uh and it's fun when that happens because it just gives you something else to cook that's not a 200 dollars snake river farms brisket right um but kcbs this year what i've been told was the board when they approved the backyard team of the year races they um they couldn't decide what to do about contests that had pork versus contests that didn't 
essentially just trying to keep it fair for everybody, right? So, right. How do you do an overall when half of the half of your your teams have to go compete in pork, and maybe they're not that good at pork, or the other way, maybe they're not that strong at chicken ribs, but if they were competing in pork, they could really, you know, excel at that final standing. So, so they decided this year at least um, not to have an overall team of the year for uh, the the backyard. And they essentially just wanted to to test it with. Uh, well, I don't want to say test it; they're actually doing it. But they just wanted to run with the things they knew they could control, and that was in the rules: a KCBS backyard must include chicken and ribs. So that's what they ran with this year. Now, funny enough, because uh, I'm a nerd and I love competition barbecue, and there wasn't that many competitions this year. It was easy to calculate. I think if they did have an overall team of the year this year. I think we would have came in second. Um, we would have lost to a team down in Alabama called Lila Q, who mm-hmm. uh, is by far the best backyard cook in the nation. But I think we would have had the second most grand champions of any other team. So are you going to the um, the big contest? Yes, sir. Uh, so, so they're having a backyard division in that contest as well. Right. This now tell, year's the tell, now tell us about that one. That's that's a that's a huge event. Yeah. So this is the second ever KCBS World Invitational. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one was last year in like Little Rock, I think, and that's where uh, Chris Schaefer from Heavy Smoke kind of burst onto the, like he was on the scene, but he really made his presence known there uh, by Grant in that one. But this year is the second ever. And it's the first time they have in the backyards here, and the way that you got invited as a backyarder was you had to take a first place category call in either chicken or ribs in a certain window from like June of last year till, uh, or no, I'm sorry. Till, from like January one of last year till July 31st of this year, I think was the window. And they only had 30 spots this year. So I always tell people it's a funny story because I, uh, I had a first place chicken call last year. But I wasn't a KCBS member in good standing. Mm-hmm. So, out. And I thought, well, there'll be a grace period because I wasn't a member because there wasn't a whole lot of backyard stuff. Well, there was no grace period. So, when we started this year, after COVID let up and we started having some competitions, I had four chances, four categories to, to get the invite. And luckily, we snagged it on the, the first category of the year. We, we took a first place chicken. And you went, so, and you went ahead and joined KCBS. I joined KCBS in November of last year as soon as I saw the meeting minutes where the board approved a backyard team of the year race. I didn't know about the world championship yet. The fact that they did that was just icing on the cake to me as a backyarder because here's the thing is, and I, I hear some pros say that, you know, if, if you want to do it, you got to be all in, just go pro. And I hear them and I don't disagree with them, but that's a lot of money. Oh, I don't. I don't. I think. I think, Steve. I think if if you're looking for growth in a um, in a activity, I think your backyard is where your biggest growth is going to be because the uh, the professional it is it is expensive mm-hmm. uh, because they're cooking um, you know two more meats all the time. Um, right. Uh, Thanksgiving fees they, are more. They make it. They make it more. I mean, you don't have to. You know, you don't have to travel around in RVs and. Right, trailers right. and stuff, but, but they they the do. Um, they have a backyard. We can play in it. Yeah. It, suddenly, you take just for instance, uh, say total cost. If I could afford five pro events, well, I could probably afford fifteen backyard events on that same budget. Yeah. So, you know, it's just it gives people the opportunity to participate more, and as you participate more, you're going to get better. And of course, with any well, at least for me. You know, the the better I can do at something, um, it's that much. I think Travis Clark, uh, pretty pretty well known for saying, uh, winning. If it looked like he wasn't having fun in the competition, you did not quite understand. Winning was fun to him. So, you know, the <laughs> the more you can get your name called, you know, that's just the funner it is. Yeah, the uh, I think I think the uh, backyard division is where they're with probably where their biggest growth is going to be. Um, yeah. I, I really think because people yeah. people want to put their they want to put that toe in the lake on competition barbecue. You know the the day you know when you talk to people. I've never competed, but I've you know cooked barbecue, and my friends and the family said my barbecue is the best they ever had. Um, you know, hey grandma, here's some more free ribs. You want some of those? <laughs> and um, 
Yeah, and they, she thinks they're great. And uh, I told somebody, I said, you know, and we we were having this. It, it wasn't it, it was a heated argument, but it was a it was a stressful argument. I was, I was talking with a guy one time, and he was saying he didn't feel the need to compete, blah blah blah, and everything like that. And and I was telling him how fun it was first. And then he was saying, well, my barbecue is good because Uncle Jesse said it was good. And Aunt Mary Ann said it was really good. And my wife really likes it. And I said, you know, you, you can say whatever you want. And, and you can you, you cook good barbecue. Yes, you do. But until you put six pieces in a styrofoam box and you turn it in and you let six people that you have never met and don't know judge it and then they give you a score you'll never know how good really good your barbecue is uh, you know it's 100 percent right steve it's i didn't think i made bad barbecue before but honing in on this craft got a lot more i don't want to say intense because that doesn't sound fun but to me it is uh it, it got a lot more intense whenever i i had gave myself a smaller target to hit you know what i mean mm-hmm Suddenly, it became more than, yeah, just throw them on and see what they do. It's like, no, I want to make this be perfect. And the people that I give this to, I want their eyes to roll back in their head when they try this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And and the um, the thrill you the thrill you get when you do get a good score, uh, when you look at this, like when you like when you finish in the top ten. I mean, winning. I, I don't know how that feels. I don't even know how reserve feels. I know how sixth place feels. <laughs> and that felt wonderful. A sixth place finish, the best we ever mm. did. And I mean, we were ecstatic. It was mm. the second, my second best day on earth, uh, except for the day that I broke eighty on the golf course. That was the best day of my life ever. <laughs> ever. I have everything: birth of children, marriages, everything. Was that <laughs> was that day? And um, uh, just being just being in the mix. You know, when you're going into the last category saying, hey, we've got a shot at this. Mm-hmm. You know, just being in that, because the, 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 there's only, you know, there's only, you know, 10, 12 people there that have got a shot mm-hmm. uh, of winning when it gets down to the final uh, brisket call. And yep. it, it was so exciting. I mean, you're just, you're just on edge. And, um, yeah. and, it, and it is. And when people, and it's and on the other side, side is when you finish last in a category. Uh, um, you're just, it's like, ugh, because everybody, when people look at the sheets, first thing they look at who won, the next thing they look at who was last. Every time, wrong. every time, don't, you know, every single time, that's what they look for. <laughs> and you know, everybody's looking at your name when you're last. And uh, that is the most humbling. Um, oh, it's, it's awful. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's just horrible. And yeah. um, because you thought, man, that wasn't that bad, was it? And uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I tell folks, you know, we go to awards and, and we'll get lined up and uh, they'll start calling. And you know you know about how you should do, but the thing you don't know is how everybody else did. And I tell folks, I know I must because I'll feel my chest start thumping. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can feel your heart beating your ears. I'm just like, well. This is uh this is clearly something I enjoy doing. So, and then, gosh, this weekend was crazy. Out of six categories, we pulled three first places, and uh, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good weekend right there. It wasn't bad. My buddy Dave Dick is the organizer, and he the way he tells it, he got tired of calling my name, and he <laughs> where he'd get to first place and he'd pause and take a breath, and I'd be staring at him, and I knew, I I knew. In my head, I'm like, he's got to call my name. He has to say my name because I know what I did the, yesterday, and I know what this this was about the same. And he hasn't called me yet, so and you just wait. And it felt like it took about five minutes for him to actually say DQ barbecue, but he eventually said it. Well, good for you, Steve Dodson. That's a, that's quite an accomplishment to go there and, and sweep. How many teams? How many teams? Backyard teams were in. It? I think there were 19 Friday and 24 Saturday. That's a, that's a big, good field. That's yeah, a we good, had, big uh, field. And, of course, teams from West Virginia, Virginia, Tennessee, Alabama, uh, Pennsylvania. It was a good field. 
Now, you saw who won the second day in the pro division. I was staring them down the whole time. They were they were just right in front of me there, so I was just watching to see what they did. Yep. Robert and Lex Vanderripe of Smoke Me Silly. And, yeah. you, and you know where they're going to be this Saturday. They are going to be at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Smoke and Barbecue Day doing demonstrations. That's right. And yep. I heard they aren't going to be alone either. No, they got. we've got um, Trey Terry's coming up with his wife, and they're at Smoke and Sweet Meats, and they're mm-hmm. coming up with them as well. Now, now, can you imagine having the opportunity – to watch, talk, and listen to a guy who is the tenth best barbecue cook this year in the nation, and this past weekend was the very best in the nation on a single day. That's right, and yeah, he they won that amid a crowd of just oh my, that was ugh. yeah, is they yep. snuck in there, put it on. It was it was impressive. The best, the the best in the nation were there. Absolutely, the best the best competitors in the nation. I uh, I was trying to soak up what little I could. I couldn't hear anything, but man, I was watching what they were doing. So, yeah. yeah, if I had the chance to watch them actually do a demonstration, I'd be all over that. Well, they'll be doing it at uh, my place, the Owls Nest Barbecue Supply and Pro Shop, this Saturday in mm-hmm. Ottawa. So, if you get a chance for watching, come on down and uh, uh, meet Robert and Lex. Great people. Uh, he's bringing his jambo, so he's oh, gonna, yeah. gonna be show everybody his jambo, and that's kind of fun. And um, he's going to be doing brisket and pork demonstrations. I got Sean Cosby, one of the guy that owns Choo Choo Barbecue here in Chattanooga. He's doing a steak demonstration, steak steak demonstration. And uh, Big Ed Kaler of of Chattanooga and Ottawa is a comedian. He will be doing a one o'clock show there. I wish you could. Won't you just come on down here? Did West by God's not far from the from Ottawa? It can't one, be that. About an eight hour, about an eight hour drive. You know, it'd be the first time I'd gone somewhere distance this year without pulling a trailer behind us. So, yeah, I mean, it's see, you kind get, of just fun. You could get in the little car. What do you, what's, your little, what's your little daily driver? You got probably got, a, what, a Kia? Nah, it's a little uh, Volkswagen take one. So, not much different there. A Volkswagen, yeah. yeah, okay. So, you can bring it down here and see where it was made. It was probably made right down the street. It actually was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's made, made in Chattanooga. Chattanooga? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, see, it's, <laughs> see, it's, see, I'm connected to everybody in barbecue. See, no see how that works. <laughs> see how that works. <laughs> you got a Volkswagen made in Chattanooga, and you're in barbecue. See, I know all about it. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Ken Smith's out here. He's saying, uh, Ken, Ken Smith from Nashville says he can't wait to uh, show up in uh, Ottawa this Saturday. Ken will be there. He's going to help out. Best beard in barbecue. And, Absolutely. Uh, and he won a contest to say he, so he can say that. So, uh, we're, you know, we're, I had trying to get me to enter that contest and i didn't even know ken was entering it but i didn't enter because I, I told him i said look i know the guy who should win this and uh yes yeah, so i'm not going to enter because on the off chance i do win it'll it'll be a fraud and <laughs> be turn a fraud. Ken in once hey you're on a roll though you may you may have you may have won it if they had it if they had it next time you should enter you're on a roll man go buy a lottery Maybe. ticket well in uh not this weekend but next we'll see if i've already used up all my luck well that's going to be a, that'll be a bigger field it'll be a better field but um, I'm anxious to see how DQ Barbecue does, and um, I tell you what, Steve, I will I will say this right here now: if you finish in the top ten, you don't even have to win. If you finish in the top ten, we'll have you back on, and we'll introduce you to Chattanooga on Talk Radio 102.3, and uh, you can um, spread the uh, spread the barbecue gospel from um, West Virginia. How about that? That sounds like a plan, Steve. Now I got something to shoot for, so I'm definitely going to try Absolutely. to hone in. Absolutely. You win, you get to go on the Owls Nest Barbecue Show. That's like that's like being a comedian, get to go on with Carson. You don't, you don't, you don't remember Johnny Carson. You're too young. Oh, I've seen clips. I know you're talking. <laughs> I've seen clips. All right, buddy. Thanks for picking up the phone. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem, brother. We'll Have see you. Have a good one. <laughs> what a great guy, Steve Dotson from West Virginia. One of the one of the best backyard cooks in the uh, in the. Uh, nation right now let's, let's call let's call ken smith and see if we can't get a hold of ken let's see what he's doing it's fun just pick calling picking up phone calling your friends this is great i think ken's probably watching on his computer he's probably fumbling around trying to figure out i gotta figure out how to do separate uh, calls oh that's boring
maybe he'll call. Us. Maybe he'll call us back like like Steve did. But don't forget this Saturday at the Owls Nest Barbecue Supply and Pro Shop, at from eleven until four, we've got a great uh, of a day of uh, demonstrations, free barbecue too. I forgot to mention that I did uh, five pork butts uh, yesterday, and we've uh, we've pulled them and we've got them uh, wrapped super duper tight. And then got them in the, the deep freeze or the deep, deep cold refrigerator. We're not going to freeze it, but we got it in the deep cold to keep it good and fresh. And we'll heat it up, and it'll be just as good as it was when it came off the pit. Uh, my friend Lamar Young is coming in in the morning with me, and we are going to do three briskets. So we'll have brisket there. <laughs> Jeff Maxwell. Hey, Ken. How you doing? Hey, buddy. What's up, man? Hold on. Let me get you. Turned on here. Uh, we're just, you can, that's okay. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we're just. You there? Uh, yeah, I'm just sitting here calling all my friends all over the nation. Really, okay. Really, really, really uh, entertaining. And I was just telling everybody <laughs> that we're having, um, I was going over the menu for this Saturday, and my buddy Jeff Maxwell, who's usually here on Thursday nights, man in the chat, he'll be, uh, he's going to be, he and um, his teammate from Smoking Goat Barbecue, George Gibson, will be manning the brat bar so we're gonna have a uh, brat set up and uh we're gonna have uh, <clears throat> brisket and we're gonna have pork butt ken so um that's gonna be a lot of food served that day and we've got uh we've got some um we've got some beer on ice we're gonna have we've got some cokes and sprites and water and uh we've got you know what else i've got i've got some um i've got uh 12 bottles of wine that the good folks from from Green Mountain Grill sent me on my last shipment of Green Mountain Grills. I guess we've sold so many of them. They they said we got to do something for these guys out there in Ottawa. They're going crazy with these grills. And it's um, uh, are you a wine drinker, Ken? I'm I'm not. Uh, no, no, my wife is, man, but I, I'm not. I think this I, is a a Russian Chardonnay. A Russian. <laughs> a Russian Chardonnay. Man. I wouldn't know the difference between that and a bottle of Boone's Farm. Sorry, I'm going in here another room. I'm with you. So, uh, so we're going to have that, and my good friend Carl Sodergren uh, will be. Uh, he'll be my uh, celebrity uh, bartender. Carl is an amateur comic, and he can really keep you entertained as well. He's a very funny young man, and yeah. um, we've got um, Jennifer Purcell will be there. She'll be doing serving the food. That's uh, Grayson's mother. Uh, Grayson's a little 15 year old that works for us at the gas station part time after school and on weekends. And, uh, she'll be there and, uh, Ken will, we'll find you something to do. Ken, well, I'm sure you'll have to carry something for me. And, um, but it's just going to be a great day. And, uh, I want to urge everybody if you're, if you're within 50, you know, 50, 100, 150 miles, come on down. It'll be a, a great way to spend the day. Beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful weather, Ken. Uh, weather's going to be, you know, 75 degrees and yeah, the, uh, yeah. The uh, cooking demonstrations and the comedy show are going to be indoors in the back garage auditorium. We'll have chairs <laughs> set up with a sound system, so it's going to be very comfortable. And um, uh, when was the last time you got to see a comedian in a, in a garage? I don't know, man. I, I heard you had a stadium seating in there. Is that true? Um, if you're tall, you we do. <laughs> <laughs> if you're tall and you sit in the back, we sure do. So yeah. that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. looking forward to seeing you come down too. What? Um, tell me about the Faces to Places uh, podcast that you've got going. I saw you posted a uh, picture today of you doing one of the episodes. Tell me about the two episodes you've done and what's coming up. Well, the the two episodes that I've done is uh, well, actually I've got three out. The, very, the first one was a uh, uh, just to get started, man. I, it was on the uh, uh, ice cream social we have here every year at our house. Mm-hmm. Been doing it for eighteen years. And uh, the second one was actually on a barbecue uh, joint that's in West Tennessee, uh, B.E. Scott's. It's owned by Zach Parker, and mm-hmm. he's a second-generation uh, whole hog barbecue cook there at, uh, in Lexington, Tennessee. And they do that's and, all they do is whole hogs, right? Man, that's all they do is whole hogs. And it was a, it was a great conversation if you get a chance to listen to it and listen to Zach. He was. He started working down there when he was like four years old and grew up doing it. And, uh, so he has that's some great barbecue too, man. Man, that's hard. Uh, that's hard. That's hard work too, man. Buddy, they have to man those pits all day and all night, you know, year round. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and then they see the third 
episode I did was about a bladesmith uh, down close to the Alabama state line down there. He's just 25 years old, but uh, he's taken all the classes and has a passion for making knives. And he, you know, he makes like heirloom quality knives, butcher knives, pocket knives. I mean, you just name it. He makes anything. But, kind of, uh, kind of but, like those but my, forged, but my, in, those forged in fire guys that you see on television. Yeah, that's yeah. it, man. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. exactly yeah. it. Yeah, he has cool. a passion for it, and he's great at it. So that, that's what my podcast is about, just anything Americana. And uh, uh, the last one, the one I was working on last night, I went up to the uh, Great Pumpkin Festival uh, way off, up in Allert, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. They grow giant They grow giant pumpkins, and uh, they set the state record and world records up there every year. I think the one that won this year was about 1,700 pounds. Good gracious. Yeah, man. They what? had watermelon. They had watermelons. It was it was like three hundred pounds, four hundred pounds. God, man, that's a lot of miracle grow. What? Um, yes, sir. <laughs> what do they? How do they move a seventeen hundred pound pumpkin so they don't break it? Man, they they got to have a tractor with or a forklift or something like that. And mm-hmm. uh, they grow they grow them on pallets and uh, you know and they pick them up, and oh, put them okay. in the back of the truck, and put them in the back of the truck, and uh, bring them to the contest. And, it's amazing how big those things are, though. But they uh, they grow them from seeds that's genetically altered to to grow big, yeah, to grow large. But they've got you know there's a lot of hard work involved in growing them. So, anyways, yeah. it's it's pretty cool, man. Just uh, my podcast just about getting out and seeing the country and letting people know about things that uh that they probably don't know about, and they you know and uh, it's it's fun things to see and go you know talk to people and. Well, you know, Ken, we live we live in a state that is uh, you could fill you could do a hundred podcasts just in the state of Tennessee of all the uh, all the neat things that we've got in our state because it's such a diverse state between West, which is uh, Memphis, which is you know big time, big time big city, and then um, and then that little drive from Memphis to Nashville, uh, you you think you're going back in time. It's like driving in South Georgia. You know, absolutely nothing but interstates for miles, and you don't see anything. It's just, you know, farmland. And then you get to Nashville, the fastest-growing city in the United States. You know, 100 people a day move there, which is incredible. And then um, then you come over those mountains into where my, my area is, uh, southeast Tennessee and then east Tennessee, and you can't find a flat spot to put a uh, horseshoe pit on. It's everything's <laughs> up and down. So yeah. it's a it's such a diverse a diverse state. Um yeah, you know, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of story ideas. You can go to uh you know what would be a good one to go to Dover to Petros in uh Morgan County and go through the uh, Brushy Mountain State Prison and uh you know they've turned that into a uh, a distillery and a restaurant and a tourist attraction. I don't know if you know that or not. Really? No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you know that's of course that's where uh uh, Tennessee's most hardened criminals, the most famous probably being James Earl Ray, that was yeah. um, was there. And uh, boy, I tell you what, it you talk about the end of the line, but that was the end of the line. They, uh, uh, you know, they had fences up. They didn't need them because if you if you walked out of that place, you still had to get over those <laughs> mountains. And yeah, I mean, there was no place to go. Nah, was... step straight up. And, yeah, uh, right. You know that you just couldn't. Um, I mean, man, you couldn't escape that place. But now it's a yeah. uh, you can go through it. They have they have tours that are by uh, they have guards, for, former guards and former inmates give the tours. So it's kind of like um, yeah, it's kind of like our version of Alcatraz. Yeah, and they've got and those places of, give me the creeps, man. Yeah, <laughs> I just all the stuff that's gone on in those prisons. Yeah, you want to you? It's the only good thing about it is you don't hear those doors slam behind you. Yeah. Well, you, hey, man, on a on a on a happier note let me ask you this have you ever had figgy pudding in your life have you ever tried figgy pudding i've never even heard of figgy pudding well you heard a christmas song uh uh we wish you a merry christmas right and it's in there you know bring me some figgy pudding okay is that what they say i, I never yeah heard. okay it, well know, that's know, that's, what, that's what my De- that's what my december podcast is going to be about it's going to be uh comparing I got some coworkers coming over, and we're going to compare figgy pudding to a, some good old southern banana pudding. So what? What, <laughs> is, what is what is figgy pudding? 
uh, well, I got to make it. Uh, figgy pudding is a European. It's a, uh, well, it's, it's actually, it's like a cake, mm -hmm. uh, but like a, like a real figgy pudding is more of the consistency of a banana pudding that, that we, you know, that we know, but it has figs in it. It has nuts and raisins and, uh, well, how, now how is that going to compete against banana pudding? Dude, I don't know, man, but they made a song about it, so it's got to be pretty yeah. good. Yeah, but there have been a million songs written about banana pudding. <laughs> yeah, well. I mean, golly, banana pudding is, uh, that's one of the that's one of the greatest desserts ever invented by yeah. <laughs> whoever, whoever invented it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's what my podcast is going to be about. It's just going to be a live. Well, that'll be great. That'll be great. Uh, recording of, you know, we're going to, everybody write down their, you know, their pick, and then at the end of it, we'll reveal, you know, who won, you know, figgy pudding or banana pudding. Mm -hmm. So, but anyways, that's, I just thought I'd throw that, it out there. Since yeah, this that is the sounds food. that sounds like a real goal, especially with the season. That's uh, yeah. that's, that's good that you're uh, you know sticking to a kind of a seasonal thing. And uh, how far out do, how far out do you have these things planned, Ken? Do you do you have like a little notebook when you when you think of an idea, you write it down so you don't forget it, kind of like Jerry Seinfeld did. Oh yeah, yeah. I've got I've got ten or twelve uh, lined up. Mm -hmm. I've got one lined up with the train uh, 576. You probably haven't heard of it, but they're in Chattanooga, man. Y'all have all kinds of trains. But yeah. Here in Nashville, they have a train that was parked uh, over in Centennial Park. It was back from the 40s, and it's the largest steam engine train in the country, a steam locomotive. Mm -hmm. And it just sat there for years on display, and they've, they've uh, towed it to a, to a big shed, and they're working on it, going to get it get it up and running again so well that's neat. Uh, that's a and that's a piece of history there it, it it pulled our serviceman to and from world war ii out of nashville mm -hmm. and so i'm going to be talking to the guys on the restoration process and what's involved and you know and the progress of it and all that kind of stuff well that's good you'll be uh, man with that with that um with the imagination and talents you've got for that kind of stuff with that deep voice and that that cool that cool bearded uh, swoop back <laughs> hair look you got going. I mean, you'll be on yeah. um, you'll be on public television for too long hosting the oh yeah the Ken Smith show live from Nashville. No nah, man, man, I'm doing this just for fun. You know, if I get two listeners, that's good, and if I get two thousand, that's good. Yeah, you know, I do it. I do it. Do this because I like it, and uh, you know, it's just a hobby. Well, it's interesting. So, you know, are the, where we live. You know, you know, the little things were just around Chattanooga that um, I was looking at a list of the. Um, uh, places just in Ultawa that are on the National Register of Historic Places, and there's a there's a, a brick building. When you're going to my house, I pass it every day, every day of my life. I pass this building. It's I I didn't even know it was on the National Register of Historic Places. It's the oldest brick building in Hamilton County. It was built in I think 1851. And uh, it's just a, it was a house. Uh, a minister right. built it. And, uh, you know, it was just fun to read the history about it. Um, I knew it had, I knew it was very historical, but I had no idea that it was, it was, uh, it was on the registry. And yeah. There's another one just about five or 10 miles from here that's on it. There's a, and we've got, of course, we've got the, uh, in, in Chattanooga, we've got the Browns Tavern um, over there in Lookout Valley. Um, so, I mean, there's just all kinds of things just in, just in Hamilton County and, uh, gosh, in Nashville, oh my gosh, your County and your, your, where you live is it's, there's twice as many things just, yeah. just in the country music, uh, realm. Just think of all the stories that are out there that, that are uh, waiting to be told. Right. Well, man, there, there's some things that I want to go to, uh, like, uh, in Columbia, they have Mule Day. Mm -hmm. and I don't know. If, no, I don't know if you ever heard of Mule Day or I've been ever, to it. I've heard of Mule Day, but Mule Day is giant, man. It's there's so many people go to that thing, and it, it's just crazy. Uh, you know, I just want to go there and talk to some guys that do the mule pulls. I mean, there's some old guys that have been doing it forever, grew up doing it. And, uh, I mean, that's just one of the things. That it's around. There's a RC Cola Moon Pie Festival. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah. just there's just all kind of events and people and places to that 
that people just don't know about. That's that's really worth going to see. You know, you, you know, you don't have to travel out of our country to go see cool things. There's a no. there's a lot of stuff here that people hadn't seen yet. They one don't even the, know about. One it. of the neatest festivals I went to were um, where my wife is from in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, not far from Knoxville. Uh, they have a, a festival called the Secret City Festival every year, and they they go over the history of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Um, you know how it was put together by the government, and how they brought the people in to build the uh, uh, work on the Manhattan Project, and how secretive it was. And uh, you know everybody everybody thought that it was on the list, um, the Soviet list for annihilation. If should 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 a a nuclear attack ever be launched against a country, and that turned out that was false. That it was not on the list because the Soviets wouldn't want to destroy it because they would want to find the information. That was there, so you know, little tidbits like that, or yeah. I, I think, I think are just real interesting. A lot of people don't, but I, I think they are. Yeah, yeah. So you learn, learn, learn little things like that. Well, buddy, I tell you what, I sure can't wait. Let's see what a hell on man. Let's see what Al Salvage has to say. Al, Al, Al Salvage is on. He'll be there Saturday. Uh, okay. He said he used to work with a guard, a guy that was a guard at Brush him out State Prison. Okay. So that's a that's a pretty cool thing. <laughs> Jeff Maxwell said. Yeah. Jeff said I didn't know you were going to be doing this. Jeff, I, I didn't tell you. I just decided <laughs> I've been. I was up here cleaning up. I had to. I got a new computer. I got a um and a uh, can this computer I got this thing. I guarantee you, NASA doesn't have a computer this big. <laughs> It's it's a called an Alienware, um, it's a Dell Alienware computer, and I had to get it because the my little laptop wouldn't wouldn't uh, push the show anymore, so I had to upgrade a little bit. Yeah. So, that, so I was just trying it, and it's do, it's doing great. The graphics look better. You look great. I mean, the 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 the, the video card in this thing is just incredible. Well, that's good. Yeah. Man. So I think the sound is really good. So um, yeah, with all the stuff going on, you got to have a real computer to do what yeah, you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, and um, what? Well, hey man, uh, who's gonna be cooking that brisket? Uh, uh, Lamar and I, we're, we're gonna be doing it. We're gonna be doing it Friday. Now, Robert Vanderripe and uh, T- uh, Trey Terry uh, will be doing a demonstration, and they're gonna they're gonna get up early and they're gonna cook one. I believe, yeah, they're gonna get up early and they're gonna cook one, and then uh, show everybody how to trim it and you know get it, get it ready. And what they're doing, Ken, it's real neat. Robert, Robert, and I talked last night, and and Robert is a, a really interesting. He's a smart. He's a really a smart guy. Um, he's going to describe uh, the techniques um, of what he's doing on his meat through. Uh, let's see, how did he say it? How taking the approach of a competitor, but, but, but preparing it for a backyard cook, which which means, um, to me that meant he's going to give you great flavor profiles, but it's going to be enough meat that everybody can eat instead of just six people. You see right, what I'm saying? Right. And it's uh, not going to be overly trimmed. Right. It's not going to be. It's not going to be crazy you know, crazy flavored like they do in contest. But uh, I, I assume, I, I, I'm not, I'm just, all this is just an assumption. But right. um, it, it's going to be, uh, it'll be a flavor profile that if you'll come and, if you come and watch us and take notes, you will, you know, you can take this home, this information home with you, and you can make a good uh, brisket. Now, Lamar's coming over tomorrow in the morning. We're going to get there at 5. He, he said he just, he says he just cannot do a brisket. Um, and I don't, and I, and Lamar is a very talented cook. So I'm going to help him tomorrow morning, show him what I do. And, uh, so we'll see how they turn out. So, and they'll be, of course, we'll be giving those away on, uh, Saturday at the, uh, at the event. So we're yeah, looking, well, forward, to, looking forward to that. Well, I need to come here and take notes, man. Cause, uh, I just bought a brisket the other day. I put it in the freezer. Mm-hmm. I haven't cooked a brisket in a while. Cause that, I mean, that's a lot of meat. Yeah, it is. You know, I just been doing, I just been doing chuck roast. You know, when it's just three or four of us. And, mm-hmm. uh, but I got that brisket, so I need to take some notes. Cause I hadn't cooked. I hadn't cooked one in a while. Well, Robert, will, you'll you'll be you'll be, uh, you'll be in the right place this Saturday with Robert and Ter- and Trey. Um, well, they're two good ones. They are really good. Yeah. And I think well, that's Robert, right on time. 
Robert, I think Robert said he's even got a, I think he said he's going to do a Wagyu brisket. And so, boy, if he did a Wagyu brisket and gave those samples out, good Lord. Could you imagine yeah. that? I mean, that's wow. that's the difference in night and day. Well, yeah, look, yeah, it is. All right, buddy. Hey, George Gibson says, hey, guys. Um, <laughs> George, George will be there. He'll be there uh, Saturday helping Jeff do the brat, do the, uh, brat bar. And, uh, okay. I got, I got all these brats left over from an event earlier this year. They've been in the freezer, and I've got to get them out and get them in the circulation. <laughs> We've been eating them all week at the gas station. I've been cooking brats hey. for you guys. I, t- I brought, I took the guys um, some brats for lunch today out in the garage, and and usually on Tuesday they were saying, "Wow, this is great," and today they went again. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. So, I know. So I put it up some, a little bit. I put some relish on it. I did some different things to it. So we we made them happy. But, Ken, okay. we'll see you Saturday, man. Bring the whole family, okay? All right. All right. I will, man. All right, man. See we'll see you. see you. You bet. Ken Smith from Nashville, one of the folks that will be there on um, Saturday. Ken's a great guy. If you want to meet just a fine fella, come on out and meet Ken. He's a super good guy. All right. We're going to get out of here. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this little impromptu show. But I want you to come out tomorrow night at 7 for the big for the big new format that we're having. We'll, we'll be live on Talk Radio 102.3 here in Chattanooga, simulcasting to Facebook. And our first guest on the new format will be none other than David Bosco, the Butcher Barbecue. And if that name sounds familiar, if you're not really sure, who's David Bosco? David Bosco, Barbecue Pitmasters one of the winningest people on the show ever. The top three are Rod Gray, Robbie, um, uh, I'm going to miss Robbie. I can't think of Robbie's last name right now. Uh, Robbie and David Bosco, the top three winning people on Barbecue Pitmasters. And I think Lene Oxley may be in there also, too. She may be tied with David. But she's a great, talented cook. And uh, she lives in the upper uh, northwest region of the country. But she... Lene is great. We'll get her on the show, too, sometime. She's been on before. She's super. So we'll see everybody on this Saturday at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply and Pro Shop for our great uh, Smoke and Barbecue Day. And plus, we'll see everybody on uh, tomorrow night at 7 right here for the simulcast new format on Talk Radio 102.3 and on Facebook. See you tomorrow night. Hey.